Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert. I'm looking at some software by Rogue Amoeba. Um, I like Rogue Amoeba stuff. I just think they do Mac stuff kind of better than Apple, frankly. Um, and people in the audio production community are going to be familiar with things like Audio Hijack and especially Loopback, which is really good. It's, it kind of takes what Soundflower does and just does it loads better. But um, yeah, Core Audio is sort of like, uh, in the audio world, it's it's the thing that makes Macs really useful compared to PCs, just because it kind of, it's a bit more elegant and just allows you to do some stuff that's really hard to do on a PC. But something that's a little bit of a drag is that the interface with it, is, it isn't it is the best, frankly. Um, getting to sound prefs, I mean, you can, of course, get to it from the Apple menu, go to system preferences, all of that stuff. But uh, if you want a quick tip on how to get there quickly, if you just... Uh, hold Option and click up here on your volume if you've got it displayed up in the uh, up at the top. You can get straight there from here, and here it is. And you can do a lot from here, actually. I mean, you really can, but you can't do everything. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit limited. Um, one thing that you can do, which is very useful, and I, I certainly like to do, is um, because we tend to be working well below zero dBFS when we're working in DAWs, or at least we should be. When somebody phones you on your iPhone, if you're an iPhone user, all hell breaks loose. And basically, system sounds can be very disruptive and, and quite alarming, frankly, if they're coming through a powerful monitoring system rather than through a little laptop speaker. So it can be quite useful just to send them somewhere else. So, for example, send them to your built-in speakers whilst talking to your audio interface from somewhere else. That's, that's a good thing to do. I have to confess, half the time I haven't got it set up like that. You can do that in SoundSource, but you can do an awful lot more. So here's SoundSource. Really useful thing. What can you do with it? Well, I mean, straight away, what you can do is you can control and mute your input sources, and you can route them to different destinations. You can do that in sound preferences, but it's just a bit more elegant over here. So here I go, and on the sound effects, I'll send that to somewhere else. I'll send that to my Mac Mini speakers, and uh, if I want to mute my input, from here, if I want to change the relative levels, all of those kind of things. It's worth saying that this is a free download and, you, and it's not a time-limited demo. It does have some quality restrictions, so you can't use it um, without, without the fact that it's uh, an unpaid-for demo affecting you in any way. Exactly what those restrictions are, I haven't checked out because I've got a full license here, as you should get. Although, you know, if you want to check it out, download the demo. Absolutely, that's what it's there for. Now would probably be a good time to mention the fact that we're running a featured partner deal, uh, giving a 20% discount on SoundSource uh, over at Production Expert. So go over to the deals page on Production Expert to save yourself 20%. So things get a lot more interesting when we get down here, because as well as having this uh, input, output, and sound effects control that we've already got duplicated in the sound preferences, we've also got per application controls, and that's really interesting. Now, in the past, what I've used to, to access that kind of functionality is uh, Dante Via, which is a little bit like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut, just because if you're not using all of the Dante part of Dante Via, you're kind of, yeah, it's, it's sort of the wrong tool, but you can, that, that is quite a good way of doing this, but this is a lot better. What you can do is you can mute and set relative levels between applications to then go on to the output that you've routed to wherever you want to go. And you can send individual applications and and direct them to specific audio interfaces, which is kind of really handy. So for example, um, if you have your DAW and you've got that routed to, actually, I'll add an app. Here we go. So what shall I do? I'll add Pro Tools. So I want Pro Tools, no redirect. I want it going to my Focusrite Thunderbolt. Uh, that's a Red 4 Pre. But my browser audio, I might well want to redirect somewhere else. For example, I might want to send it to my Scarlet Solo here, which I've got routed out to uh, another little set of speakers. So you can do a kind of, you know, per application, different routing to different places, which is kind of handy. And don't forget, of course, I'm sending my sound effects to my Mac Mini speakers. So if somebody rings me or I get an email or something, I'll get a little noise out of a tiny little speaker in the Mac. If I want to just send some audio out of YouTube, I can do that and it will go out to my Scarlet Solo. And then if I'm working in Pro Tools, I'm going out of my big monitors that are connected to my Red 4 Pre. So you see how handy that can be. Also, of course, what I can do is I can pull that down a little bit so that when I've got some kind of like completely toothpasted, you know, limited to hell YouTube audio coming out, for example, um, that's not going to 
uh, be quite as loud. That would be particularly useful, actually, if I, if I hadn't routed that out, so I was sharing the monitors. So I don't get that full-scale noise terror when I switch to browser audio compared to my tastefully, you know, comfortably below 0 dBFS, which I've got when I'm working in Pro Tools. The other thing that I think is very cool about this indeed is, I mean, if we come up here, let's just look at the output. What you can do here is... Okay, you can uh, you can do various systemy type things, but you can add an effect. Now, um, you can, for example, just add an equalizer. I'm not actually interested in that equalizer because I've got really nice ones which I can use down here because I can come in here and I can install any plugin I want to. So, for example, if I want Oxford Inflator <laughs> across everything to make everything sound better, because basically Oxford Inflator does make everything sound better all the time, I could do that. There we go. Obviously, with it turned up to 100, don't do that. Um, in a slightly more sensible application, because, uh, I mean, that isn't the worst idea I've ever had, but I'm not going to do it. Um, we can just get rid of that, and we could do something like, if you want to, well, actually, let's have a look here. iTunes. You'll see you've got this effects already on here, because I've got Sonoworks Reference 4 running, and it's running uh, a profile for my uh, Neumann headphones. So if I want to listen to some music out of iTunes through my headphones, I've got that pre-applied and everything sounding all lovely and uh, as it should do. In the same way that you can run speaker correction software, um, you could also, if say if you had a pair of the head monitors, uh, the, uh, the linear phase filters for that aren't built into DSP in the speakers. They're a plug-in. So you can run uh, a VST or AU or AAX plug-in of this head linearizer, which provides a uh, minimum phase crossover filters. Now, I found that really easy to use while I was using it in a DAW, but if I needed something to host it in so that I could just listen to some music off a Tidal or something, really difficult to do. This is absolutely perfect for it. So there's loads of potential in this. Um, if you want to set things up exactly how you want so that you've got your different sounds, your system sounds and your browser audio and your DAW audio going to either different hardware or you just want to control relative levels or send some stuff through some processing and other stuff not through some processing. There's loads and loads of things that you can do in SoundSource. Really worthwhile. And actually, one of the best things about it is that it's just so accessible. You can get to it so quickly that while you could set these things up using this, you actually do.